I'm Jeremiah. Um, just to come and introduce myself. Um, so I work for a company called Adolescent Content. Um, we're adolescent, but um, we're a Gen Z creative agency and content studio. Um, and we're rolling out this new show it's called Count It All Black George, my baby. But you know, it's all about celebrating black voices, black influencers, black talent. So you know, I had to put I had, I had to put on for the put on for this one time. Um, oh, and I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel, so I'm like, I'm thinking of people. I'm like, I have to have Zach Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you so much. All right, so let's jump in and get this thing started. Um, so like I said, you know, I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel. So I know you're a YouTuber, but I feel like how you describe yourself when you like you're out in the world and people ask like, what do you do? Do you say I'm a YouTuber? Like, what is your self-defined well, title? I think when I first moved to LA, I was definitely saying like um, YouTuber, influencer, because I think that's what was drilled in my head. And I think like I was thinking like that's what it was. I think that was like what I wanted to do. But I think about a year or two into LA, I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> influencer for me is not the all and all be all because I feel like influencer li like limits you as so much to be just an internet personality. And I'm like, there's so much more to me. And I feel like there's so much more to so many other people that cause themselves influencers. And I'm like, I call, so I call myself an entertainer. I was like, because I do so much. I was like, literally, I talk to people, we review, we react, we sing, we dance. I was just like, this is not, I can't just be like, oh yeah, I'm just a YouTuber. Because I want to do more than just be on YouTube for the rest of my life. I don't want to be 40 years old and still, you know, make YouTube videos. I want to pay people to make YouTube videos, to make, you know, content. And like, have another gay black boy younger <laughs> than me get on it and pop and do it. Yep, I'll just put you on, girl. That's what I see. So I'm just like, I'm an entertainer. And it's funny you say that as you were, as you were saying that. I thought it's since we're in this digital age, it's almost like what an entertainer is. The definition has been like expanded because we usually think of entertainers as like TV, you know, movies, singers. But in a sense, a lot of things that people do on YouTube is inter it's entertainment, essentially. We just found new forms of entertainment. Like, I've definitely spent, especially now, when, first of all, cable is expensive, first of all. That's <laughs> Girl, I had cable. I have had cable since I left my parents' house. <laughs> I had it for maybe had, the first few home, months. Like, I don't even know how to work the damn cable box no more. I go back home like, wow, Xfinity has gotten sickening. <laughs> I think I might have had cable for like a first few months and I moved out my own. I was like, oh, this is expensive. Okay. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need the bundle. Because I had TV, phone, and I said, who's saying? I'm not even watching TV. Because I, I literally it. sit on my phone and watch YouTube videos. And like sometimes, you t like you add to YouTube, you probably know. You start like, I'm going to watch one little video real quick. Before you know, it's five hours later. You're like, how did I end up on spaceships and, and on the moon? I was watching something. Next thing you know, I was watching... I started watching something about, like, I was actually interested about something about animals because I have a dog now. Next thing you know, I'm watching mechanical animals in the jungle, watching real, I'm like, what the hell? How did I get here? What happened? Oh. Just no, so I definitely understand that. I definitely understand the, the shift to entertainer. And in a sense, too, it's almost like, I remember I had a friend tell me, when people ask you what you do, tell them what you want to do, not what you really do, if that makes sense. Come on now. Because, like, even as myself as a content creator, I mean, you obviously can do yourself as your actual job. So a lot of times, I might be working, like, I used to be a, a TV assistant. And I would be like, you know, I'm an assistant. Da, 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 da. And my friends would be like, why are you talking about all these other cool things that you do? Yeah. And I'm like, you could think your brain, you, you see you're so quick. It's like, oh, well, I work at The Gap. Or I am in retail or whatever you do. Instead of saying, oh, I'm a songwriter. I sing. I do whatever this is that you want to actually know you for. So I like that you kind of had that shift in your thinking. Um, so, I know you're from Detroit, but let's talk about this journey from Detroit to being on the Beyonce tour, because uh, let's, let's just call, let's call, let's call a thing a thing and say that you're on the Beyonce tour. Uh, let's just say, first of all, to be on a tour, generally speaking. Talk, like, I don't, this is what happened. The, and it's, it's literally like the craziest time and nobody believe. well, people believe me, but it's like an unbelievable situation. So I was in college at the time. So I was, I, I was I'm born and raised in Detroit, but I moved to Ohio for college, went to Central State University, HBCU. We, so, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll so, get to that. So jump to that, bump to school, getting into my gig, and I'm doing my YouTube videos in my dorm. And at this time, I linked lady, me and Lady Gaga already had talked. 
on um, Graham Norton at that time over across BBC. And that thing had already popped off. So my channel already had a little bit of momentum. So I had did a video about Beyonce two years to, before Lemonade came out, right? And I like it was no, it was on the Beyonce era, and I had made a video on my old channel that nobody, girl, it's an old channel, and I had posted on there, and I was like, and I post that 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 clip that she that she used, didn't think about that video after, just completely forgot about it. I get an email from this mysterious lady, like, hi, <laughs> I am with Beyonce for the and it was just so secretive, and I'm like, I paid it. I said, girl. Y'all need to stop because y'all need to stop. Because literally, you get emails like that. You like, okay, let's be real. Let's you be. Are, I don't know if people know that, but when you are the influencer on the rise, you get so many crazy emails. Like, well, I don't know. It all be it all be fluff fluff. So, I next thing I know, I'm checking my school emails. They emailed my school email, my actual email. They emailed. They found a, a Facebook account. Like they were literally trying to get my attention. So I was like, let me just give these people a call. Let me just see. I gave him a call, and she was like, oh, Mr. Campbell, we were expecting your call. Um, so, yes, Beyonce likes to use your clip on the Formation World Tour. And I was like, lie. Send me a contract, girl. They sent me a contract. Put Beyonce on the phone right now. Let's At this point, um, they sent me a contract. I scroll, and I think it hit me like a ton of bricks when I saw my name sign next to hers. And I said, oh, okay. So this is the time. And so she's supposed to use it for one time. It was supposed to be a one-time thing, like a one spinoff, like, oh, we love you, Zach. Okay, thank you. Bye. But it went over so well that she called, they, her team called me like the day after the premiere. I was in the movies when it premiered and I broke down and collapsed. And then <laughs> her team called me the next day. It was like, okay, so Beyonce loved her clip so much in her interlude that she wants to use you for the whole rest of the tour. So then we start talking about business. I said, okay. No, this is <laughs> and that's what happened. That's dope, like, especially thinking, like, like you said, a lot of people join YouTube every day, starting their own channels for, for different purposes, but it's really think your video got to, like, damn, to, to be a part of a tour, if you do nothing else, you, realize, do nothing else. <laughs> you can tell that story to the cows come home. Okay, but listen. I was a Beyonce was, story. I guess it was so weird because she actually handpicked me and was like, she actually was like an actual tired-ass army member. So Beyonce is an actual, like, and I tell, all people knew Beyonce be watching shit. Like, she's always on the internet. So, yeah. I believe it. Yeah, people say she, got, she probably has, like, a little troll account somewhere is watching everybody's content. I'm sure. Um, so we can't, we can't um, ignore the fact that you are a gay black man, a thick gay black man, and let's, 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 call, let's call it thing a thing, the optics of that. And people look at that a certain way in our society. But I feel like, in a way, you own that. You own it to its fullest. It's not like I'm gonna go try to be somebody else on the internet. You bring your full self to um, what you do, and I feel like that's the thing that people connect to about you. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, hey, did you kind of start off always saying, "You know what? I'm gonna own it." And has, it, has that been you your whole life? Like, this is who I am. You gonna take it or leave it? Um, it wasn't me my whole life. I would say like. Um, I was a skinny child, so like I was a bony child, but then I went through foster care and all that stuff as a child. So all that trauma, I gained weight because I started eating and it was just like a whole depression thing as a young child. So I grew up big and grow up heavy set, and it was like getting teased and such as a child. But I think because I have family members that are so supportive, but yet like my family is like that, that black family that like, if you want to lose weight, you can, if you don't, we gonna be here, but we, it's just gonna be this thing like, well, he's hes a big, he's big Zach now. That's what he wants to do, that's what he wanna be. <laughs> I had room to be what I wanted to be, I guess, in my house. So I think that that played a lot, that played a lot with finding who I was and what confidence was for me. So when I got to college and I found out that, oh wait, you can actually lose weight. Oh, it doesn't have to be. Um, <laughs> I started to work out and stuff like that in college, but I didn't really get serious about my body and owning who I was until I moved to LA and really graduated. Like, I, it's like I had to shed a skin. I had to like leave my college mentality behind. Now focus on Zachary. Like, okay, what do you want to do? You're in Los Angeles. How do you want to shape yourself? I could be the completely plus size guy and I could, you know, do the whole shebang because there's nothing wrong with that either. But I was like, I want to do something for me where 
I love curvatures. I love having um, a little roll here, a little, you know, I love that shit was sexy to me. So I said, like, oh, it's real. Stuff. People are, that's the, like, you look, people are, like, I think, especially in entertainment, there is this idea that to be successful, you have to be this one thing. It's even, I think, even, I was watching something because obviously Adele dropped her new photos of like her, like, new, new year, new me. <laughs> and people kind of thought about it. I had saw two sides of people were like, why wow, it's great that you know that's her weight loss journey. It's almost like, People's reaction is kind of like, well, you always praise for losing weight, but like when you're in your full self, it's kind of like, well, she can sing, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's like you don't get that, you don't get that full same amount of love. But as soon as you drop sneak pounds, people, oh my god, you look so great, you're you look amazing. It's like, was I? How's that? Okay, that's what I get. The girls, I tell you, I think that, and it's funny that you was bringing up, especially in our community, um, with being a, a bigger guy in the gay community. I think that. When I was oh, that's a whole, and that's a whole other layer. <laughs> We're talking oh. about layers. Whoa, that's a whole peel back that once we get Black Lives Matter down, we're going to have to keep going. Because <laughs> it's so, that was one issue that I was like, why are we so body shame in the gay community? I don't understand that because men come in so many different shapes and sizes. And it's like flavors. So I'm trying to figure out why would you be so stuck on one, you know, body type? Now, don't get me wrong. I do live for preference. I understand that. There's a difference between preference and discrimination. That's the whole thing. Exactly. All right. I think that there's a difference between being like, oh, my God, I would never. And like, oh, I usually go for this. But I mean, if somebody pop up, I'm not sad, you know. So I think that once I found confidence in myself and losing weight and working out, because I love working out, it became like an actual, like, I have to work out if I don't, I go crazy. Well, teach me, because I'm still, I've been in quarantine. I have a, I have a little pull-up bar. I'm like, I need a pull-up bar not one time. They don't follow me from apartment to apartment. Actually, I'm, I'm like, yeah. One in the closet. <laughs> it's just, it's, I can literally say for, it's just here over the thing ready. And I'm like, I'm going to do it one day. I, I, I you just I, got it. I like how people work out, but people like, like they, they say like therapy, they can focus. I'm like, I don't know if I'm to make it today. Yeah, I don't know about that. No, it's just, you got to make it. It's just became therapeutic for me because I like to listen to music and work out. And it's like, I get like choreography ideas, concepts out. It's just like a, it's a weird thing. So it turned into that. And then seeing so many plus size guys come to me like, oh my God, where you get this from? Where you get this from? How you learn how to dress like this? I was like, let me let me let me shape up and show you girls how to really get in and now um i love this position that i'm in to empower everybody not just plus size guys because i'm now in this middle part of my face where i'm like just thick i was <laughs> like so i'm like i'm really just loving that i can speak to everybody and like this just live how you live and get in and to that point you uh, also opened up on your channel about obviously having like body dysmorphia and dealing with that um what made you do that because obviously the, first of all the internet is the internet and people don't care. Like, even we saw how, um, with, like, Summer Walker, when she said she had, like, um, social anxiety, people dragged her for that. Like, it, people don't care about you. No, they, don't they, care about they, don't they don't care if your mama just died. They write that to your mama. They, like, they don't care. There's no, like, filter. So, so open up and be that vulnerable. Especially when people, I feel like people look to your channel for, like, an entertainment, things like yeah. that. Anytime people kind of switch and, like, do something serious or something that's not, put on, on, on brand, it's like, why are we talking about this? I want to see that. So what was that? How did you make that choice? Was it always a conscious choice, or did you just say one day I'm just go do this? I think it was a, it was more for me, so I think that's why it was easy to do. So it was more for me to document and to um, show, like I guess the people that really support me, like how they really felt. Like I feel like I wanted to show like this part, this transition part of my life. Like I'm, at that point, I was already serious about working out and I was starting to like really understand my body and like understand fitness and understand nutrition. And I was like, well, why would I not tell the people that watch me or see me grow up? Literally, I've been doing YouTube since I was like 14. And there's been people that literally been there since then. So I'm like, why would I make this complete big change in my life and not at least share it? So I told one of my friends that's really good with cameras. I was like, let's see, if we can do like some type of documentary to just like see if people can relate to this. And I didn't really care about people dragging it because I knew that was going to come. Like I knew that because I'm giving you material to like use. But on the same tip, I was like, this is more empowering because it's like, I have full control of this narrative. You know what I mean? So I was like, I mean, you can, you can make fun of this world all you want. It's won't be here in a couple months. So yes, you're right. And, that's, so and one thing I didn't even realize about like by this more fit, a lot of times people aren't always necessarily like on the heavier side of habits. Sometimes you can be, you can be smallest, like smallest a, a stick and still have that same 
viewpoint of yourself. So I think it's a definitely like a universal thing. Like people look at that and can say, even if even like a side of bite is more if people we all have something we look at ourselves in, in the mirror and like, oh, yeah, let me I think all like even if like for me for me it's like it's always been like my smile. But people like, I love your smile, I love your smile. But like for whatever reason, how you look at yourself is always different how people perceive people can tell you you have straight legs and whatever. It can be like, well, I hate my legs. It's so everyone has that, that thing that well, for whatever reason, our insecurities kind of like cloud our vision of how we look, no matter how great you look, whatever. And but I like the fact that you kind of took the steps to say like, hey, this is me. This I'm not perfect. I'm struggling with this. Some, some of y'all out here are struggling with it, but we human. Him, and we'll get past it. Like, why put so much pressure on yourself to look like somebody else or something that you're not? Because God gave you whatever you got now. You gotta, you gotta, girl, you better work it. <laughs> you better work it. Until you, you got another choice at this point. You better work it. <laughs> um, so, speaking of you, of you being just very like vocal and very transparent, one thing I love about your channel is that you have no problem holding people to task when, it's, when, when the time is right. Whether that's entertainers or just like I think, especially with someone like you have like, a very diverse um, fan base and supporters and subscribers, I like the fact that you don't shy away from like your blackness in a way. It's like, hey, this is happening, but let's be very clear. <laughs> or even taking a moment, like like I said, people look to you for entertainment. But even taking a moment in your video, say like, hey, this is going on in the world right now. We never act like it's not happening. Yeah. But I'm still giving you this Bopper Fly Friday real quick. But rest in peace, George Floyd, or whoever it may be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, think, I think there's that balance. I think a lot of times people just act like this isn't happening. We're going to go over here and do this. But it, it's real world, like, especially as a black man. Like you, you're existing in this world. So it's this wasn't my question originally, but I, I honestly want to know like, how is your, like, what goes into your mind as you have? Because obviously people look to you for entertainment, but it's like we're in the real world out here. So, like, how do you prep yourself to be the light in it's the dark, if that makes sense? Um, it's it's not as hard as it I think it is. I think it's it's almost like for me it's just always, it's just common sense for me. I think that I'm, I'm com coming from Detroit. I'm coming from a predominantly black city. Like I did not come. I was not raised around white people. I was not raised around uh, my Latino brothers and sisters. I was raised around black people. <laughs> so all I knew was black people. And even when I saw. Black people come together. When you, when you, girl, when you're in Detroit, if you are down and you got people that ride with you, people gonna ride with you. And that's just where I'm from, you know what I mean? So I think that going through my career and going through, especially going to HBCU, even amplified that, that feeling and that thought and having amazing black parents. I had two amazing black parents that raised me. So I think that when I got a platform to be huge or to, have, to talk to a lot of people, it was almost like, why would I not yeah. talk about you know, what's going on with my people because yes, I'm an entertainer. Yes, we can laugh, kiki, we can dance, sing, but baby, my people are hurting. Or if it was my gay people, my, my people are hurting. It's just, I don't know, it's just easy. It's just, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a question in your brand. It shouldn't be a, a it shouldn't even be a strategy. I, I didn't have to call my manager like, so I'm gonna make a video out. Girl, I'm gonna go do what I need to go do. Hi, bye, just take it or leave it. And there's a lot of strategy person. happening around whether or not Black Lives Matter is sad. There's a lot of strategy happening to say, should we say Black Lives Matter? Is that Girl, what we're saying? Today? Talk about it. Some people have actual strategy meetings to be like, oh, we should say Black Lives Matter. There should be a Black post posted at 2 o'clock today with the sad emoji. Girl, kill it. So <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. That's my point. No, I agree. But in speaking to that, there has been the like I said, the internet is ruthless. We all know this. The internet don't care, and they have been holding people to task, but influencers, celebrities, people of cross different platforms about like, especially with so much happening, like it's almost like you can't ignore what's happening at this point. And they're kind of been holding to task about whether or not they should be speaking out. And although you're vocal on your platform, what is, how do you feel about that? Like, should do influ are you obligated to say something? Should other like black into, like influencers have to say something? Absolutely, right. Absolutely. The reason why I feel that way, hmm, I want, let, me, let, me, let me make my statement like this. I feel like you, ha I feel like you should say something, absolutely, but I also feel like you should have artistic freedom to do it when you want to. And I feel like some people, if you don't do it this way, it's not speaking up. And it's like, girl, you can't say that. They did it the way they feel like their hearts are doing it. So yes, I do feel like every influencer, if you have a huge platform, anybody 
with thousands of followers. If you have one K and up, <laughs> you <laughs> need to say something because people look for you for some reason. You know what I mean? And I feel like if you're black, that if you're black alone and you was raised by black parents, that should be that should be enough. That should be enough. Like, okay, I need to go ahead and say something. Because this is crazy. This little girl is now fatherless. Like, you know what I mean? Like that was like, whoa, I had to take off like two days off social media. Like, and I'm very private when it comes to social media anyway. Like I'm very like, I don't really over post. I'm very like, this is my job. This is what we're going to kiki about. And we are probably kiki about my real life a little bit. But like in real life, I was like, oh, I have to step back. Oh, this is too much. No, that's true. Like even for me, um, like in the midst, like I started this show in the midst of everything going on for work. And then also, like I just had my 26th birthday, uh, maybe the same week. Thank you. The the day before my birthday, I think that's when George Floyd had died. And I'm from Atlanta, so uh, East Atlanta's on six. You know, shout out to everybody. But um, <laughs> uh, my Aubrey's case happened obviously in Georgia, and like I didn't realize she was only 25 and about to turn 26. You know, and my mom had like a real conversation about that. And it was just like, dang. Like, it, whatever, like, and it, it, even Brianna Taylor, like when I did my our first um, our first uh, episode of this series was with Tamika Mallory. And we did it on Brianna Taylor's birthday, and, I, and she was twenty-seven, I think. And it's like, it, 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 and I, it's like I, it's like you feel it too. So that's what it's right. Like. It's uh, like you feel it in your body a different way. It's like you can't uh, like every day or something. You like, dang, I can't even. It's like, it, 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 you, like you really feel it. So I definitely understand it, but I do agree with you. Where it's like, let people say it how they want to say it. Like I saw an influencer talk about it, and she was actually saying like she doesn't. She feels on, on her platform. She doesn't want to um, promote black trauma, if that makes sense, or pain. And I say she won't speak about it, but she'll never see her like reposting like a video of a dead man in the street. Now, like, I respect that. I, I probably wouldn't do that either. That's not like, it's like Rihanna. Because like literally, like I, I think even even for me, like I have I have yet to see like the Mar Aubrey video, the George Floyd video. I I, sort of, I I can't like I couldn't bring myself to even watch it behind closed doors. So why would I post it on my platform? Exactly, and for, and for some people, they have like they they can watch it with no problem. They, they like I don't say they like to see it. But they they understand the understanding of the uh, seeing the gram. You know what I mean? They right. actually see the, the injustice. I know the injustice. I just <laughs> I can't I take just, it. I break my that break my heart. Totally this. The story alone already got me feeling this like this. What if I saw it? I can't. Mm -mm. No, that's that's definitely where I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> back back to the light of the day. So, um, you do the video about this uh, particular thing I'm about to talk about, and you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I want we got to talk about this because I can't let the video interview in without talking about this. Um, Beyonce's homecoming. Mm -hmm. um, the people saw that Coachella two weekends in a row. Um, then she gave us the documentary on Netflix. Um, and me, being a, a fellow HBCU graduate, I know, and also being from Atlanta, the South, you know, same like I feel like Detroit in Atlanta are heavy in our same type like those black cities. The highway is very much connected between Detroit and Atlanta. <laughs> you make that eleven hour drive, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel like the people really got it? Like they, they saw a little bit of like, you know, the step, the music, they saw the band did, did they really get it? As an agency grad, did they get it? I tell everybody this. Beyonce gave you it's like when you know when you go to Sam's Club or Costco? And you get those little samplers by the freezer. And it's like, fuck, that was good. Wow. But you got to go get that whole box. You got you to get that whole box out the freezer and take it home and make it yourself because you got to really get in. So I think that Beyonce literally gave you the platter. Like, was like, girl, this is what you would get. But in, unless you ex go to an HBCU and actually go to, like, walk through those hallways, get on the yard, go to the calf, Use your meal card <laughs> unless you really <laughs> have that experience. You go. It's a different. It's a different vibe. It's a different. Vibe. But Beyonce did what she had to do, and she very much gave. The, it was the whole storyline. I saw the whole storyline. She got. I mean, all the way down to probate. I said she really did the whole damn thing. So because yeah, it, unless you're in that it. in that world, you don't get it. like you know like okay they step in they do it, but you don't you don't get it. It's like a whole other layer of getting it when you went to HBCU. Even like down like when I say. The sound of a marching band, it's like it, you feel it differently. When you see your band, watch, like, I don't know if your band did this on the yard, but our band used to rehearse through the yard. So, like, they'll do oh, yeah. like, their, their parades, like, sometimes randomly through the, through, through the day, through the yard. And it's just like seeing you walk into class and you, here they go, you gotta wait, because here they go, okay, girl, come on. Because you, you walk through the line, 
it's a trap. <laughs> so you gotta just wait till they pass, honey. Like, okay. And but seeing that, I feel like I took it for granted now because I'm like, I used to be so annoyed. But like seeing that and thinking about it, it's like, oh, those are not. They hit that. The whole yard is just like da 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 da. But we hear that all the time. So it's just like, if you get it, you I get remember it. I I worked. From my one of my, I used to work in um, news a while back when I, right when I graduated, and we have to do like Friday night lights and go to different schools. Now this is like in a predominantly white area, predominantly white area. I'll say that um, in Texas, and the bands, I, I would hear the, the bands. I'm like, what is this? It's not giving me what I need. What, what, I don't, I don't hear it's talking outside of your neck. What, what's I don't about? hear the soul. I don't hear the feeling. I don't hear the feeling. Yeah, yeah, I got the flags, but I don't see anybody like popping and dropping it. Where's the popping and dropping? You're twirling. You're not. You 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 throwing that flag, but you're not twirling. It's like a little. Da, 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 da. I, don't, I don't need that. That's not what I came for. Twirl. <laughs> I can't take. <laughs> All right, so we have a game for you. It's called "In That's That on Zay." Okay. That's in the game. That's that on Zay. That's that on Zay. Um, so it's about you. Very opinionated on your channel. You definitely, like I said, have you don't hold that, especially when it comes to music, artists. I love your little Zoom calls that you do with them, the little six <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you read them. You're like, you know what? I love you, but that, that, that. Yeah. So, so I'm going to throw out a few, a few thoughts, a few questions. I want to hear your thoughts in advance. Um, so this is definitely something that's always trending on Twitter, this whole idea that the music industry is dropped, like a drop the boss every time when it comes to like our brown skin R&B girls. But not even brown, just R&B, black R&B girls. So you will do that to Tanache and Armani. Something that's happening with the dancing girls. It, like, it ain't... It's yeah. like, a, it, there's a, a pattern that's happening here. So what are your thoughts on that? It's an evident pattern with this, like... But it's... it's but you... I, mm, I don't know how far I want to go into Because <laughs> it's just like, I know I have... I have a theory, but I just feel like... <laughs> it's just after talking to... Because I... I talk to these record label execs, and I, they know these, these Skype calls that everybody else, they watch the exact same ones. And I've even had some from some labels, from some girls, and call me, be like, you hit the nail on the nose. Yes, that was it. And I'm just like, well, why don't, you know, I'm going to just say this. Some of the girls don't want it. And that's just, and that's something, if you don't want to hit that next level, that's on you. I know some people that have written with these girls in the studio, and they come back and see me like, girl, they not. They don't want to do this for real. It's not. They're not giving. They not, they're, not, they're not there. And I've heard that about a lot of people, not just females either, like male artists too. And it's just like, that's unfortunate because it's like, I see these people, I'm like, you could be this, you could be that. But if I'm doing all this hoopla on this channel, talk about, you need to do this, you need to do that, and they don't even have the mental capacity to want to do it because every little comment could mess with them. Um, you know, it's just a lot of factors into these, the, that scenario of the inconsistencies with like labels and the particular like R&B girl. It's just like, it, it's so much work that needs to be done. It needs to be revamped. That whole, whole era, needs, it, ha, it, 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 fall, it fell flat since the era, to be honest with you. So like Sierra was the last one to ride that wave. Yeah, Sierra was the last one to ride that wave very well. She was the last one to make it successful and make it actually part of her legacy. Unfortunately, listen, Sierra from Riverdale with that Giddy's album. That listen on the porch. Like <laughs> if you're gonna do it, you go. You gotta do it right. Sierra did it. Oh, she did it. Oh, oh. so. If you're going to come, you got to come. Because Sierra, you can say what you want about my girl Sierra. At least she's going to have a hit at least one time out of, out of something. She's going to have something. You're going to know her. You're going to know she came through. But that's Listen. because she worked hard as a young girl. Definitely. Okay, so next one. So you actually have this, 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 this uh, group of girls, one of your well, group of young women, ladies, women, on your um, channel, Little Mix. Um, and recently, Leanne, you know, she posted a video about her experience being a black girl in a group. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, we've seen that obviously with other groups. You have like Normani and Fifth Harmony. You have even you know, like Spice Girls. You have Scary Spice, the only black girl representing these groups. So what are your thoughts just on her? On her thoughts? <laughs> I think that both her and Normani thoughts are very valid. I think that they're very true, and they're not even telling you the whole story. One, they're very much holding back. 
They said I'm gonna give you the whole CJ shit. Wait for the bio fit. The yeah. because one, they're still in contracts. They don't want to mess up their coin. So I understand, you know. However, comma, those girls, those girls experience so much like bullshit behind the scenes when it comes to these labels, when it comes to brands, when it comes to being represented in the industry, because they already have this 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 eye on them. Because once they see the black girl. Everyone looks at that black girl. Is she being Beyonce? Is she being Kelly? Is she being Scary Spice? Is she being like, it's like, okay, let me be me, first of all. Let me come show you what I can do. But then on top of that, oh, she can't even do what such and such did, girl. And this is my, this is our people talking. I haven't got to white people yet. Because <laughs> that's the gag. For some reason, our people like to get down on black women, and it's, and it's, and that's to piggyback off our last question. When it's a hard, when it's like a caramel dark skinned girl, for some reason, it's a it's it's like uh we gotta hold them to like this other standard that we don't hold our other girls like our fairer skinned girls um, to a standard. It's like we put so much on our dark skinned girls, and they don't do this. Oh well, girl, I don't know. They can do better. <laughs> and it's like what? she had one bag one bag note. Oh, she she can't listen to her no more. She she sang she can't sing. <laughs> This I, I and I said this. Normani literally, literally did backflips on this VMA stage, and people still are like, "I mean, I guess you got it." <laughs> Meanwhile, you got Miss Girl, blue blind hair, blue eyed over here singing in one spot off key. Stop playing with me. There's this one video that you reacted to. I'm not gonna say the artist, but they sing about singing off key. On a particular song, and they sung off key, and your reaction had me dying. I had to send it to my friend. I said, "Y'all, I I can't." But like you said, there's like a there's like a different standard when there are people that aren't black people. It's kind of like, well, you know, they had a bad performance. You know, get like X Y Z. Let one of the sisters do it. Oh, you know, no. Oh, she just she's doesn't terrible. Who who signed her? I hate it. Um. I hate it. So next one. So can't, how do you feel about people canceling artists for either things they said in the past or like even more recently, we have a few artists running their mouth and saying stupid stuff currently. <laughs> so how do you feel about just how do you about canceling artists in general? I always say this. I think canceling artists, I think one, the cancel culture is essential. I will say that. I think cancel culture in some sense, in the very little sense, I think is needed in certain situations when we do the research if we do our research first, we want to cancel somebody. Um, but I think the cancellation off of, I was talking about this the other day, actually, with some friends. I was like, the cancellation, the fact that people get canceled off of saying the stupidest stuff now is crazy to me. Because I remember a time in pop, which I wish I was Zachary Campbell in that time. Because people get out the car with their vaginas. That was the, that was the moment. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh oh, or she signed out the club, high off, whatever. Like those was the moments you'd be like, oh, we need to, we need to talk about her. We need to cancel her, maybe. We need to. But it's like now, if you tweet something stupid ten years ago, when you nobody knew who you were, nobody couldn't even fathom. You didn't even know if you would be a star. People dig your old shit up because you're not gonna go ten thousand tweets ago. You're not gonna go look, you know. Right. Now you, now you crucified off of that. And you could have changed. You could have grown. But people don't want to see that because they love to see people with success. Oh, it's like everybody's favorite thing to see. It's like, oh, they made it. They're falling. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. One thing my friend always says is he's like, the internet is not a place for nuanced conversation. It's either oh. this or that. You either are cancel or not cancel. It's never yeah. like content. Yeah. That's what I try to do on my channel. I try to bring that nuance. I try to bring like, Let's actually have a conversation. Let's have dialogue about this whole situation instead of being like hopping on the channel, being like, "Yeah, and you did this, and that was stupid." Like, what? You okay? <laughs> like, I like even the video you did. I think regarding like um, Camille Cabello's situation and saying like, "It's it's looking a little shaky, it's a little sketch." Look, because <laughs> the timeline not adding up right now in these in these remarks. Let's, let's be real. Um, but even. I, and it, I think the issue I think too I have sometimes is that going back to just a double standard, we are I think everyone deserves grace, everyone deserves a chance to like change 
But I think a lot of times with our our people, there isn't that grace given. It's like up you out versus with our yeah. non black people. It's like they were they were a teenager. They were seventeen. They didn't they know the N word was bad. They don't care. Like, <laughs> girl, that's a child. <laughs> versus if you're if you're even like um. I think even when it ter- c- comes to the conversation around like the LGBT- LGBTQ community, I feel like we've got to have grace with that because if we look at 10 years ago, what the landscape like was then, it's very much different. Even in, in these last few years, you see a lot of things coming to, um, coming to pass and like different people having a light in moments. These people who are like black having awakening, awakenings about being black. So it's like people are always learning and growing. I think you have to just kind of look at people. Are they willing to grow? Are they willing to make that change? Or they just don't be like, well, I said what I said. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you said what you said, goodbye. That's a child. And that's when you can, that's when you can counsel somebody. But until then, give them a chance to see what they're going to give. And if they're giving tired, if the, if the apology <laughs> is tired, you can read. <laughs> okay, so what are your thoughts on if the music slaps, but the arts is a, a little shaky when it comes to that live performance? Are they, are you like yay or nay? How, how do you feel about that? Um, I used to be nay back in the day, but I feel like now that I've gotten close to artists and like really seen how the industry works, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> now I'm like, not really nay, not really yay, just really, okay. Um, I think that artist development is still needed in the industry and so many labels are not doing that anymore. They're not spending money on artist development. They're just putting girls out off of some social media posts or because they pop in on social media, they can make a sale. And it's like, but now they out here, got a cute song, but they're tired because you didn't want to put them through the ropes. So I think if artist development was still in people's budgets, we would have some fire people. I agree. I agree. Um, thoughts on the new generation of artists and their music videos? I'm happy that people are finally getting into cinematics. I noticed that. I noticed the new generation appreciate cinematics. The new generation, even the rapper, like I love. <laughs> People are going to be surprised. I love, like, Emily Choppa. <laughs> I love, like, I live for his music. I live for, um, like, Lil Baby. Um, the rappers are really, even in their, like, they're not being a pop star, like, making it huge, but even in their videos, it's cinematic, it's creative, it's something to make you be like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I think the new generation is not sitting down, like, doing baby girl stuff. They're like, girl, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? No, I agree. And I just, I literally, right before we started, I watched your reaction to um, Chloe and Halle's Forgive Me video, which their whole new era of I just, cin- um, cinema, they're giving us visuals. The interview with them just went up, actually. Um, oh, so I have that, to watch that, right? I can finish this. Yeah, it just went up. We had did that a couple days ago, and they were just amazing. So, yeah, that was, that was, that's what I'm saying. That was, they got that, they got that budget. The budget is there. <laughs> There's the yeah, budget. That's development, though. That's, that's actually taking your time as a label and being like, we have to make sure these girls are ready for the big time. So when they do that's it, also like, that raw talent though, that, that absolutely that talent, that's like next level. Everybody don't got it off the bat. <laughs> um, so what artists do you feel like right now need a rebrand? If you could rebrand any one artist, who would you pick? No, who need a rebrand? A rebrand, a rebrand. I feel like I'm gonna have this answer and I'm like mad that I don't know. Uh, if I had, you know who I would like to give a rebrand? Cause I think it's really, really sickening. Um, Cupcake, I really wanted Cupcake. I think that she has this like perception. People have this perception of her being like this, just internet thing or like this like, just this one minute, she's just a nasty, just say anything, vulgar to get your attention kind of rapper. But I'm like, the girl's bar is kind of sickening. And I think if Miss Bitch had a rebrand, she could really make it. I think she could take it all the way. I really do. Okay. She, she's a talented girl. And I want to see, I want to see more. But I think that her brand is already this perception. And I just think people need to kind of just like, she got to flip it, flip it a little bit. She's like, all right. All right. And touching on that, who is an artist you feel like is most left on right? Chloe and Halle. <laughs> um, Chloe and Halle. Yeah. Yeah. I literally was, I feel like even the more I watch them, I, I, like I, you see the clip of them, um, I think it's a bit more in America where they shot it in like, on their tennis court. Every time I see it, I watch them, I'm just like, wow, this just sounds like. It's just like, <laughs> nobody else is giving this right now. Like, no other girls is giving. 
It's not for Dua Lipa. People need to stop, stop giving Dua Lipa. Because <laughs> in America, nobody lives for her, but she's going to be the next pop girl. She's going to be better to watch. She's letting y'all know. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like that one song. Um, I don't know the name of the song, but I like it when I hear it. I like it when I hear it. See, but the people in America just do not be giving Dua Lipa the time. <laughs> Uh, shout out to that young lady. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but Chloe and Halle are definitely like, I feel like, I feel like people know their sounds, but I feel like this era would definitely solidify them. Because these visuals, these, these tracks, Absolutely. they thump it. The album thumps. Um, so, you kind of mentioned this earlier. Um, going back to my first set of questions. Um, this hired ass army. How do we get this title? This this name. This hired ass army. I love it. First of all, when I first started watching your YouTube channel, I was like tired ass. Like when, when I heard it, I said, "Why well, have not thought of this? This is actually a very <laughs> clever thing." Um, the tired ass army came from me always in college. I used to I, tired was like my favorite thing to say. Like, girl, that's tired. Girl, this is tired. I got that from um, the old ballroom days um, and the under the underground ballroom scene. I used to hear judges. I used to watch like old YouTube videos, like back in 2007, people voguing and shit. And I used to hear people like the, the older queens, like the OG saying like, girl, she's a chop, she's tired. And I'm like, what is, I like that, <laughs> period. Period, 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 she's tired. So that was me in like, um, in college learning that and learning the, the history behind it. And so I just started using it in my everyday vocabulary to the point where my subscribers at the time was like, girl, we are tired. You know, we are tired. And then somebody had commented like, we're a tired ass army. And they just hit me. I was like, oh, that's, that's <laughs> funny. I said, that's funny. But it also means, um, because my people, the people that watch me, I feel like are so unapologetic, unapologetically themselves. And because if you watch me, you have to have some type of opinion. So they're so into themselves and they're so, um, I guess confident in their thoughts that some people can find that intimidating and some people can think that that's whack or some people can think that they don't know what they're talking about. So I'm like, bitch, you think, think I'm tired? And I may be, but that's who I am. So bitch, be, be mad. So it's just like, I want to make it as like a double entendre. Like, it's funny because like, we're like tired, but like, we're not because we're actually very right. dedicated to what we're talking about. Um, and we got people that can interview me and do it better than me. Like, girl, so it's just like, that's what I'm talking about. The people that watch me can do what I do because we all in the same, we think the same. You know what I'm we're saying? We're in the same wavelength. We are, we, we, we see each other. Exactly. Um, and you also have the Tired Ass Podcast. So how did that come about? Like, you, you on YouTube, making YouTube videos, what made, you, what made you say, let's do a podcast? I'm so ready to bring that back, first of all. I cannot wait to bring it back. But, um... I'm working on it to make it even huger and get it on Spotify, Apple Music. I'm getting all my rights and copyright stuff done. Um, but that's why it's like taking a little hiatus. But I can't wait to bring it back. It was just something I was like, I run my mouth anyway. Might as well be a pay for it again or something else. And I feel like the podcast can be a lot more unfiltered because I'm so I'm not filtered on YouTube, but I watch what I say and I'm really good at you know making my words. You know, it's very curated, very curated. Very much. Um, <laughs> But on my podcast, it's just talking to my homegirls. So it's very kitchen table talk um, without being too disrespectful to people, but very much still just keeping it very raw. Like, this is how I feel. Um, so I don't know. It was just kind of natural to do. And when it came to just the word tired ass, um, that's now my company name. So um, now it's just tired ass entertainment. So come on, company. We love black entrepreneurs. Come on. Absolutely. So, um, I wanted to make something with that because I wanted to, I feel like with, like I said, it's a bon tendre, you can think that the entertainment or whatever I do or whatever the people I want to sign in the future do is tired or it's supposed to just seem like we whack, but we really not. It's because we sick, man, girl, and you mad. That's all. So you, as you kind of just said, um, you do want to do more content. So what do you see yourself as far as the expansion of this Zachary Campbell brand, this tired ass brand? What, what, what is the future of it? That's a long answer, but I'm going to give you the short one. The short answer is, um, in five years, I want to see myself giving other people opportunities to be great. And I want to have my own platform that's even bigger than now to where I can, you know, give people a fruit and they grow their own tree. You know what I mean? Um, Because I I watch so many talented people and I'm a fan of so many talented people that I feel like need a voice, especially our Black influencers. And I'm like... Some are so funny, so um, dope. And I'm like, if a bitch just saw who this was, it would be crazy. Um, 
But I want to get a point in my life where I can do that for people. And I can make these crazy, crazy, crazy concepts and interview these big artists and kind of just travel doing that. And I just kind of see me having like this hub of Black entertainment, but it's not just for Black people, it's for everyone. And I want to expose to other Black entertainers that it's okay to have a diverse audience. I love it. I love it. So this is, these are my last few questions. So lightning round of questions. Um, so when I came with this show, like I said, it's about celebrating just our people bringing black joy in this time. But not just this time, but all times. I feel like we always look for some type of joy in the chaos of this world. Um, so like I said, it's a lightning round. So first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you these things. Um, so what do you love most about black people? Lips. <laughs> <laughs> I love black people's faces, black people's lips. Oh, between, of course, food comes to mind second, but first, like, I have to just think, it's lips. I, black people got the best lips and the best, like, facial structure, like, facial features. Oh, my goodness, it's too much. Mm -hmm. I didn't like my big lips when I, as, as a kid. Now I'm so, I didn't like them, but you know, as a kid, you like, I don't like, why my lips so big? But then, as an adult. It's beautiful. Oh, I need it. Um, who is a black person you want to shine a light on today? Oh, Alfred Lewis. <laughs> My girl, Alfred Lewis. She lays wigs. She's really big on Twitter. Um, and she's, she's just this talented girl. Oh, she's just like, she raises the bar when it comes to beauty. It's just the, it's the wigs, it's the makeup. She's like the total package. And she's a young girl from Chicago. She's only, she just turned 20. And she's just, okay. she moved to LA and, and pumping. I'm like, girl, you... I lift anybody that can believe in themselves and trying and making something. Oh, bitch, I'm here for it. You got me as a fan. I'm watching. <laughs> Speaking of watching, what is your favorite black movie or TV show? Mm. That's a Raven comes to mind immediately. Um, because that's, well, that's like, iconic. That's why. That's like it was so that's black. It. On Disney. It, it was like Disney was black before it was a thing. Because they they let that girl get away with a lot of black stuff, and I live for that. Um, after that, a living single would be my second. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you know about that though, Zach. I don't know about that. Living, which show about living single? I don't think you know oh, about that. No, I don't know. That, that's a show. That if I'm talking about from season one. I don't one think you to understand season. the gravity of living single. I don't think you was leaving elementary school and got the bus and going to house and watching that. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. A living single was it for me, and then set it off is probably as far as. I don't know. I got a lot of black movies, but I'll say set it off for now. Cause set it off. I could watch that any time of the day. Set it off is really the reason why I would never work at a bank to this day. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, Same. I'm Same. Sorry, that's, that's real shit. <laughs> um, what is your favorite song or lyric by a black artist? Hmm. I mean, the song by a black artist. My favorite lyric. Uh, that's hard. Wow, that's really hard. You talking about that lightning? <laughs> um, cause it's so much. I don't know, cause it's so many. Beyonce comes to mind. Janelle Monae comes. Uh, ugh, I don't wanna. I don't wanna be generic and just say formation, but like, I guess formation does something for me as a black man. That's it's just the way the song. The song is so black. It's just so damn black, and it's just like. You did. You made this for the hood. You made this to bang in the speakers. This is like something you play years from now. Like, oh yeah, this is it. And I think the message behind it at the Super Bowl is one of the whitest functions. You being black as hell. That was it for me. So I think formation. Okay, that's a great choice. That's a good choice. Um, what bring, What is your hope for black people? Oh, that we all can see each other as equal, not just with white people. I'm talking about within each other. I want, I want to, I want to see us one day. I want to see us support each other how like Latinos support each other. I need us to be on that way. When somebody drops something, we buying it. <laughs> like that's just, that's what I'm. I need that, yo. Like my Latino brothers and sisters, they ride for whoever they want to ride for. You feel me? Like it's crazy, and it's like, why don't we have that in the black community? We could be that. We literally could be that. So. That's my hope. We all see each other as equal and we support each other like no other race can. That's what I want to see. I love it. I love it. And last but not least, what brings you black joy? Seeing black people happy and seeing actually 
That, but on top of that, seeing my black friend successful, that shit brings something. I don't know. It's just like another type of joy. When all me and my friends are just fucking doing all our shit right, like really doing our goals, it's just, that's, that's just like it for me. And also, I guess seeing my little brothers, like my, my younger siblings do good in school too, that makes me very happy. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Zachary Campbell, for joining me here on Counted All Black Joy. Where can people follow you? They aren't following you. Where do you want people to like tune in? What do you want people to do? This is the moment. Uh, just follow me as Zach Campbell. It's everything. Z A C H C A M P B E L L. Or on Instagram and Twitter, just one L. It's because they won't give me my damn L. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I was like, I thought it was two L. Nothing's one L. <laughs> no. Well, thank you for joining uh, joining me today on this. Um, and happy, happy Juneteenth. Um, also, like I said, make sure you guys follow Zach and be a part of this higher dance ar army because, you know, it's good. Yeah, we love to have you. We're going to war for it. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, Zach. I'll talk to you later. Okay.